for that fine introduction. How's everybody doing? Great. Great. Good. good. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, let me first and foremost uh, congratulate uh, all the students on their great accomplishments. Uh, it's my honor, my privilege to, to have this opportunity to stand before you and reflect back on those multiple years ago when I was in your shoes. I remember those times fondly. So congratulations on your accomplishments and I wish you the best as you move forward and chase your dreams and the institutions you're going to. So congratulations. Congratulations to the parents and, and Melissa and Dominic for the environment you created here. It's just an unbelievable culture where you have an environment where young people have an opportunity to enjoy uh, the chance to participate in multiple sports as opposed to be focused narrowly on one sport. As, as Scott said, at the Ohio State University, we have 36 sports, 1,010 athletes, and I enjoy the diversity uh, that we have among all of our sports. Uh, every single young person that competes in each of the sports uh, have a gift, and that opportunity for us to provide a platform for them to express that gift that is truly an enjoyable experience and a blessing. Uh, I do want to share a, a, a little challenge here because Melissa talked about her the speech she remembers from Tom Watson. <coughs> I'm going to have to come up with some serious game in order to <laughs> overcome Tom Watson. I mean, that's some real pressure there, but that's what I'm going to And uh, my intent was to, to come in and talk to you a little bit about the value uh, of participating in multiple sports, but. I don't know if I could do it as eloquently uh, as the two students uh, who gave the speeches earlier. Um, I was moved. I need a copy of that speech because I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it was beautiful because what they shared with personal, were personal experiences. They shared the value, the lessons learned, not just through one sport, but through multiple sports. So again, I commend the Academy for creating this type of environment where pe young people can ultimately, in the moment, in the time, understand what they learned. Back in the day, and I know there's a few athletes in this room, how many of you played high school sports? Okay. There's no way, for those of you who look as mature as I do, there's no way that we're on our game like they are. There's no way we understood what we were learning in the moment like they are. They get it. They get it. Now I came up here with a speech that I was going to deliver. It had all these themes about lessons learned through participating in sport. As I look at these, these two students mentioned 90% of them. <laughs> so I'm not going to go that route and stand in the pocket. But I will share with you a personal story. Um, I played in high school football, basketball, baseball, ran track, and like an idiot, the wrestling coach convinced me to try wrestling. <laughs> you got any wrestlers in here? <laughs> I'm just not mad enough. I'm sorry. Okay, that went three weeks. I said, uh-uh. So I gave that one up. But the reality is I enjoyed my experience in all of those sports because of the group dynamics that existed on those teams. The lessons learned in dealing with different personalities. You guys deal with, deal with different personalities on your team, right? Okay. The ability to deal with those, to create relationships with those different personalities helped me grow as a person. And someone mentioned the two-a-day practices, and that's what sparked me to go down this different speech. Football is a challenging game, and two-a-day practices are the worst part of football practice. And every sport has that. Film hockey has it, fencing, every sport has that preparation time that is a nightmare. And understand that life is that way. In order to be successful, you have to have a game plan, which means you have to prepare. 
which means you have to practice, right? Whether you're working at IBM or Chase or whatever, you're going to be given some responsibility, and you got to come up with a game plan. So you got to put in the hours in order to execute that game plan so that you can fulfill the task that you've been assigned. When I was at Notre Dame, I played two years for Eric Park Seizure. Anybody remember that name? Okay, and I was blessed to play for him. And, and he retired and he brought in a new coach by the name of Dan Devine. So I played my last two years for him and ultimately coached for him. And Eric, I loved him because you know, this was a time when they didn't have limitations on practice. Eric knew that we were pretty smart. So we practiced for about an hour and then we'd go in the meeting room on the chalkboard and you know, we watch film and listen to the coaches talk. That was perfect. Because if you didn't get it in practice, you just didn't play. Okay? But when Devine came in, Devine had a little, little old school in it. Okay? We practiced a lot. We'd run one play 25 times till that guy got it right. Everybody else had it right, but he didn't. So we had to run and run and run. And so there actually, and this was during tour day practices, there was a little rebell rebellion. There were five or six guys getting ready to quit. And we were so fortunate, I remember this, we were so fortunate. We had a great athletic director, his name was Moose Krause. Anybody remember that name? There's a couple people, Moose Krause, one of the greatest athletic directors of all time. He came down and broke up practice and he gave a speech that they subsequently printed. And I never forgot the speech, and I read it, and I never forgot it. Because it resonates with every single sport, and it resonates with everything you've been through, and that you're going to go through. He said, only in preparing oneself laboriously and steadily, through long hours of concentration, heat, weariness, and frustration, is are one going to be prepared to face the opportunities when they present themselves. He said, it takes unusual hardiness, and stamina to challenge the face and risk everything in competition and face again and again the specter of defeat and potential public embarrassment until it no longer paralyzes you. And it's here with a game in its life. You guys get that? You get it, don't you? Who was the baseball player? Somebody was the baseball player. You played baseball? Standing at the bat, right? The specter of defeat, potential public embarrassment. There's, there's some juice on top of that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine, we're in, we're in the shoe. Got any Buckeye fans in the room? <laughs> we're in the shoe. There's 120,000 people in here because I took those 18 inch seats and took them down to 10 inch. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing that team up north and we're ranked number one, they're ranked number two, and it's a big game. Internationally televised. They're ahead by two points, three seconds to go on the clock, balls on the left hash mark. Urban calls a timeout. 17-yard field goal from the left hash mark. Kicking into South at the big scoreboard. He looks down, waves down his little freshman, 17-year-old kicker from Centerville, Ohio, with his name on the back of his jersey. The parents are sitting in the stands. They got the jerseys on, name on the back. <laughs> and he comes jogging down. Field goal teams huddled on the sideline, they get there to talk to. The offensive line runs out, set up the field goal. <coughs> the holder gets down on his knee. Kicker's over there just practicing kicking. Nobody ever talks to the kicker because you don't want to mess up the mind, right? You know, you don't want to mess up the mind. He's over there just practicing kicking. There's a hush <coughs> and a shoot, except for those two fans from up north. Sit over there in the corner. And only two I let in. Change all the rules. No more 4,000 tickets, just two. All around the world, people defending our freedom. They're watching this game. All the bars, there's a hush in the bars. Okay, the beers are sitting on the counter. Everybody's chill. Watching this 17 year old kicker. The specter of defeat. And potential public embarrassment to the no longer paralyzes you. Our job, our job is to work with that young person the next week so that he understands what he learned in that moment. So that when he sit down in that interview with Hubert Packard, whoever it is, he's sitting in that interview, 
and he's trying to get that job from that HR director. And the HR director says, you know, we really love you. We think you have the talents and skills to be successful in our company. But I have one question for you. Here we give you a quote where at the end of the year, on December 31st, you have to hit these numbers. There's no exception. If you don't hit these numbers, you don't keep your job. Can you handle the pressure? You know, in the back of his mind, he's trying to hold back that laugh, you know. It's coming forward. It's <laughs> starting to reach. Then all of a sudden, that filter comes in. He stops. He gets articulate. He says, let me share with you some experiences I had. Let me share with you an experience I had in front of 120,000 people. That's what I'm going to Those lessons right there, think back on those. You all have them somewhere. I don't know where. In fencing, you have them somewhere. Think back on those. Because those are the ones that you're going to draw upon, sometimes consciously, other times unconsciously. You're going to face adversity somewhere in life. You're going to figure, look back and think, how did I get through that? The people on the plane, 9-11, six people on the plane, 9-11, they bought the plane down. You know one thing that they all had in common? They were all former athletes. How did those people in those different seats come to come together and create a team? How did they communicate to create a team to ultimately decide, you know what? We gotta do something. It's in, it's in you because of the experiences that you had through multiple sports and the group dynamics that exist on your team. So I ask you to never forget those experiences. And I ask you as parents and supporters and all of you to never forget that. Never forget these messages. Because the culture you created here, besides the championships, besides the academics and the 4.0 and 3.9 GPAs, all that, all that, in athletics, our job is to build the, the lessons learned through sport participation and competition. They're invaluable. There's very few incubators left. One in higher education, for sure. And there are very few incubators left in, in our high school systems where young people can get these types of experiences. So I congratulate you. I wish you all the best. And thank you so much to your parents, counselors, and everyone here uh, for the great job that you do. If I can help you in any form or fashion, Dominic, you know I'm always around. Go Bucks, go Vikings. <laughs>